going. Okay. My name is Angela Brooks. I think most of you know me. If not, welcome to this call. Um, I had the privilege of meeting Terry. It was back in the summer, I guess, maybe earlier in the year. And he and I did, yes. did a call that was phenomenal. It was probably the best back office I have ever had in my company since I've been with Young Living. And I wanted to share his knowledge with my, my friends and family here on, on uh, Facebook. And so I asked him if he would come live and he said yes. So I am going to turn this over to Terry. I'll mute myself because I've been coughing and I don't want to be hacking in your ear. So um, hopefully nobody else is going to knock on my door either. How stinking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> But I am going to turn it to Terry. Uh, thank you so good. much for coming. You're welcome. And thank you, Angela. Hopefully you can hear my voice. This is good. I'm in my car today. Okay, great, great. Uh, I've been a busy guy here recently and uh, excited. Just met with a person over here at my local Starbucks. And I said, well, I better find a spot where I can uh, have this call going and happens to be in my car. So this is really cool. Uh, I'm, I'm Terry Gibson. And I have experience in network marketing for the past 17 years. Most recently, I was there at Young Living, a great company, and I've thought about doing some venturing things on my own. So uh, now I'm kind of a, an entrepreneur. I'm doing some health and wellness and business coaching and training on the side that have now kind of, kind of been full time. And my goal one day is to be uh, the next Eric Worre. That'll be me. That'll be awesome. <laughs> uh, but no, I've actually done a lot of good things in training and coaching. And one of my things that I have going on currently is just a network marketing fundamentals course. And I'm doing that online. It's been great. And uh, we're going to start this new one here starting tonight, actually. It's going to be entitled, What in the World is Corporate Thinking? And so giving a corporate perspective to some members of what goes on behind the scenes at the corporate offices. So this has been a great venture for me, great opportunity to share. And I'm glad I'm talking with Angela because really uh, that was one of the great conversations we've had together was how does business work and how does her, her company or at least how her business can move forward from the back office point of view. So that's something that we do all the time. If I can give a little plug for sales managers at the, the company that you're at now, right now, I would say use those guys to the fullest potential possible. Go ahead and use your, your uh, sales managers, talk with them. They're there to help you out. So uh, look at them as a resource for helping on the corporate side of things. So that's really good. Uh, last night though, or sorry, two nights ago, I was able to share with my group some things in regard to um, how to share their story. And that's a topic that's been very popularized and, and sometimes gets neglected. But um, I want to share some of those thoughts with you here today. So uh, that's been a, a really important part of your business is being able to share your story or tell experiences. I was speaking with a young lady about uh, how she does her business when sharing essential oils. And she said, here's, here's the stat. She said, typically I'd invite people to a class and in that class, about 25 to 30% of those people would eventually buy some products or enroll in the business. And she said, that's, that's pretty good. But what I decided to do even further was to actually talk with people and give them a product first. And once that person had the product, they then had an experience. And then once they had an experience, I would say, hey, um, would you mind attending this class I have going on? It's on Tuesday and Thursday night, which works best for you. And the person would, would come to the class. And she said that about 90% of the time, 90 to 95% of the time, they would purchase something or enroll. And she, she really blames that on having an experience beforehand. So having an experience with the product, either herself or um, a, a child or someone that's in her family, they had an experience first and that experience helped them to make a decision. So here's, here's the principle really. The more small yeses you get makes that bigger yes at the end of enrolling that much more easy. That becomes like the principle of it. So get them to buy in. Let them see. Let them try an oil on. I remember my first experience. I had put an oil on uh, 
my son's chest. He was having a hard time breathing. And then once he did that, well, we did that for him. Uh, the next morning, he's breathing fine. He slept through the night. And I thought, this is great. No emergency room visit. No, uh, no staying up all night and, and losing sleep myself. It was a great thing. And now I could then have a story to tell. So that's, that's kind of the crux of this entire deal, having a story to tell. So if there was something I could draw, I'm gonna draw this here on my paper. If you could draw it on yours, maybe draw a big H and then I got a pen that doesn't work so well. H and it looks like, like this. If you can, here's my, my square, I can't even see too much of my thing. It's an H right there, H. If I draw then a T, little further down there's a T and then over to the other side is a G a G right there it's almost H T G the H stands for have a story have a story to tell have an experience so I would say for you guys to gain one if you already have one that's awesome have a story to tell the T is for tell that story, tell that story. And if you have a story, you can probably think about when was the last time you shared it? If it hasn't been today, it's been too long. And then the G is for get others to share the story. Get others to share the story or share a story of their own. That becomes the biggest part. They say that if you, uh, Give a man a fish, you'll feed him for a day. If you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. But if you teach that man to teach other men how to fish, he'll eat steak. Think of that. <laughs> a deeper level is be able to share that and to keep on sharing it. That's the essence of network marketing, is finding something you like and sharing it with other people finding something you like and sharing it with other people. So I encourage that quite a bit. I encourage a continuation of having a story to tell, telling it, and then get others to do the same thing with their stories. And then it recycles. I mean, once you have one experience, you're gonna have another one. And once you have that story, you continue to tell it and tell it often. Here's another one that I think is pretty interesting to me. Um, I, I've got kids and uh, one day my, my nine-year-old, who was having a hard time uh, going to sleep, he said he had some like, frightmares or something like that. He was having difficulty. Um, I was watching a, a movie myself, and I was like, oh, I better turn this off because he, doesn't, he gets a little scared of, I don't know, like, like the, the Avengers type of shows. So I turned it off. And I said, hey, Matthew, what's the matter? He says, well, Dad, I'm having a, I'm having a hard time sleeping tonight. I said, okay. His next response was, Will you put some oils on me? And I thought, wow, this is this is cool. You know, I, I like good movies. I like fancy cars. Um, I like going and hiking in the mountains. But there's nothing like a connection of a father to a son, a parent to a child. And that was a moment right there that I had of being able to connect with him. I put some... Um, it was an oil called, I forget the name of it now. Oh, Stress Away. Put Stress Away on his feet. And uh, we just had that little moment together. It was a very special deal. I think that type of a story is even, is even beyond what the oils can do. It's more about building that connection. And so that makes it a little bit easier, hopefully for the spouse. If you're talking to your other spouse and you understand, it's like, okay, now I know what she's doing all the time when she's out there on the phone calls or he's doing or going to meetings. They're not only helping people with products, but they're building a connection with families. So if you have a spouse or a significant other, uh, let them be a physician's assistant. Let them help put things on the kids or on you and let them help out in that way. And before you know it, they've got a story to tell. Again, have a story to tell. Tell that story and then get others to share their own stories as well. So that I think is, is really awesome. I'm gonna pause right here, Angela, unless you have some other things to share. I do have some other things, but if there's any questions you wanna have for me or any thoughts, 
Let me unmute some people. If y'all got any okay. questions, give him, give him some input. Got everybody unmuted. <clears throat> that is really good because I don't think people understand the power of a story. Um, they think they have, most people think they have to put on this different suit or be a facade of a business person. And the more uh, relatable you are, the more simple the conversation, the more people will say yes. Um, and I think that's where a lot of people get scared in this industry is because they think they've got to use these scripts and they've got to say these things or there's the right words or the wrong words. And it's just simply sharing what worked for you. And I had a, a mother just yesterday who has had a kit for three years and she called and she says, okay, I don't know what this is, but he's sick. I need to know how to use it. So we got her, um, we got her set up and he felt better in 24 hours. And that's what we like to see. Yes. Oh, Stephanie, I don't have you on mute. Nope. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think St Stephanie, do you have a question? All right. Now. No, I'm, I'm good, Angela. Thank All you. Right. Well, one thing I've learned too, and, uh, when I'm doing these entrepreneurial calls and things, I'm inviting the entire world of network marketing. I'm doing uh, not only for health and wellness, but there's yeah. people that provide services and other things, and and they all have a story too. So I'm I'm really getting to the nitty gritty of what they're what they're involved in, and I found this this simple little phrase works too. You can't say the the wrong thing to the right person. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. And the opposite is true, too. You can't say the right thing to the wrong person. You can't say the right thing to the wrong person. You'll be, you'll be, their, their minds aren't there. So focus on just being, just being you. Being authentic is, I think, the most important attribute you have to offer. You being, you being authentic and true to yourself, being genuine, people will see that. If you're fake and phony, People will see that too, and it'll be hard to have them being involved with your business. Um, one of the other ideas I shared with the group the other day was uh, be a likable person. Have someone actually like you. And, uh, and usually before they buy into your product or service, they have to like you as a person. I have a person, a gentleman that wants to get me involved in another side business. He said, this is a great idea, Terry. It's got all these fun things with it. The money is right there. I'm thinking, wow, this is great, but um, but I don't like you. I mean, I have a hard time with you. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's a difficult thing. Uh, my my nine-year-old showed me the one of his favorite books. It's called uh, it's called, uh, it's called Sam I Am. No, it's, it's Green Eggs and Ham. Green Eggs and Ham. And if you ever check that book out, it's it's pretty funny. The entire book is about Sam trying to get this guy to try green eggs and ham and eventually he does but the first two pages it says i don't like that sam i am that, that's, that's what he starts off with and so sam brings him do you like green eggs and ham and of course he says no i don't like them but not necessarily because he hasn't tried them it's because he doesn't like sam it's <laughs> I, I read that like tons of times and wow so understandably you want to be one of those people that people like and once they like you, it makes it easier for them to want to like your products or your service that you're serving and selling them. So Brenda um, said I'm always, I'm a big chat. fan of the stories. If you can share a story, uh, share an experience, that's where it comes back to. Yes. Yes. Brenda said something that stories turns on light bulbs. And that is so true. Yes. Sam, I am. I agree. I'll have to read that book again now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hadn't Sam, thought about I it am. like that. Okay. One other thing, too. So here's another experience, too. And this is looking at more of the, of the business, which is lifestyle, lifestyle and finances. And uh, sometimes those things come later. The product and services come first most often because they're easier to talk about and the results with the oils is pretty fast. Um, the other side of things is a lifestyle 
and then the finances. Um, sometimes people just need an extra 25 bucks for their gas, mm -hmm. an extra uh, 500 bucks for their auto payment, or an extra thousand dollars for um, yep. their mortgage. And these type of things, if you can have a story in that realm, that turns people's ear because you never know what people are attracted to. Some people are attracted to, again, the products. Some are interested in the finances. Some are liking the lifestyle. Like, wow, you know, I don't have to go to a nine to five job. I can stay at home and do this business. Really? That's interesting. Tell me more. And that can pique someone interest. So if you have a story in any, any of those categories, people are curious as well. I had a friend of mine tell me about another story. She said, um, my experience has been that my company is involved in a great philanthropic effort. We give back to this, uh, this homeless charity every year. I said, wow, that's great. And that may be enough to pique their interest to want to learn more about your company as a whole. Mm -hmm. So that's a very good thing too. There's another one that's, um, that's making, they do potato flakes. I'm over here in Utah, close to Idaho. There's tons of potatoes. And not all of the potatoes get sold in stores. Some of the potatoes are left out on the fields and they're left to, uh, I guess, to foraging and people go out there and pick them. Well, this one company decided, we're gonna pick these potatoes, grind them up and sell them as potato flakes and give them to countries in Africa. I thought, wow, that's, that's brilliant. And when I heard that story, another person heard the story said, wow, this is great. What company is this? And they start to talk about their company and what other things they're doing good. And that part of the business is, is a good thing too. So if you have a great philanthropic effort, you never know what turns people on to learn more about your business and services. So I'm, I'm a big fan of the stories. If, if nothing else, if there's nothing else unique that you bring, it is your story. It's your livelihood, your, even if it's your hopes and dreams. I want to be involved with this company because I hope to one day fire my boss. I want to hope to one day put my kids through school. I want to, I, I want this because I feel the dream of doing this other thing. There was another person that was interviewed. <laughs> this person was asked, he said, I heard you doing this, this network marketing thing. How's it working out for you? He says, you know, I'm not making a lot of money, but I'm able to fill up my gas tank every week. I'm not making a lot of money, but I'm able to pay off, you know, my car payment every month. Well, I'm not making a lot of money, but but soon my, my, my family's going to make another trip to Disneyland this year. Wow. Okay. And that's enough to have them talking about it. Your stories are powerful. So I think it's a good thing. Yes. As a, a when I was a single mom, <clears throat> $500 would have completely changed my month. Um, it's not that I couldn't pay my bills. I had insurance. I had a car. I had a house. But $500 would have done that extra. It would have been the go out to the movie. It would have gone out to eat. Um, people don't realize how small of an extra can make somebody's whole world change. So, you know, a lot of people in our industry like to focus on the 10,000 a month. Well, yeah, that's nice, but not everybody wants to work that hard because it takes a lot of effort to get there. But $250, $500, even a thousand, that's a game changer total game changers, so. Totally, totally. And I think of this too. Um, this is a special season of the year. This is a, you know, I talked about seasons in my, one of my other calls is that there are seasons of the year, but there are also seasons of your business and seasons of your, of your life. Mm -hmm. And this particular season of, of the year, people's focus is on, on consumerism. They like to buy stuff and get stuff and, and receive and all this type of stuff. Um, but it's a perfect time to listen as you, as a business owner, you need to be a good listener as well. Listen to people when they talk about what they like, what they like to buy, what they like to do, what they like to be involved in. Also listen to what people are having concerns about. If they're having concerns about their weight or about their, uh, their income or about what's going on in the world. Listen to their complaints. Be a good listener because your business can provide some solutions for them. You just have to be able to be a good listener. Some, sometimes it's easier with family to get, uh, get caught up in the mire of, of just junk, uh, misery loves company type of feeling. It's, but it's better to say, ah, you know, that's, 
that sounds bad with you. I want to give you a positive spin. I've just found out that my product does this. Or I've just found out a way that I can uh, increase my income by this much a month. And, and by doing that, you're turning the tables on a negative thought and making it more of a positive experience. You're going to be at these uh, company parties and family reunions and Christmas openings. The most important thing you can do is to listen and to hear and then find a way to provide a solution. This is a perfect time for that. I always say, you know, these months of November and December are good education months, good training months. Um, the last week of the month should be your goal setting for the next year. You should set some goals. You're running a business. Say, just like any, any business, they all run, they set goals. I mean, you know, couldn't see Bill Gates or anybody else going into a business year without any goals or, or plans ahead. So you have to say, okay, I'm going to sit down today, maybe an hour or two a day, and I'm going to plan out what I would like for 2020. What are my goals going to be? How am I going to do this? And, and make it a real life business for you. You know, if you want to be serious, you can be serious. If you want to be kind of mediocre, you can have that too. It's all on what you make. So I, I've encouraged people the other day to set some goals down. What, what rank do you want to be? How much money do you want to make? And set them pretty far-fetched, pretty, pretty out there, and then work backwards on the details of that. Well, the details of that looks like you guys have to have a certain amount of meetings per month or a certain amount of calls per, per week and almost be a, a steward of your own business. Mind your own business. Imagine that. It's a good so thing. something that you and I talked about <clears throat> when you were going over my report was my volume is insane. Like I have crown Royal diamond um, volume. I'm not that level yet, but my business is already set up to be that level. So most people look at where they are instead of where their business is already projecting to. So I no longer say that I'm just this rank. In, in my journal that I write every day, I tell myself what rank I am. And it's the power of the I am that speaks to our, our thoughts and our subconscious versus the numbers that are directly in front of us. You have to know who you are before you can become that. So, right. awesome. That is, Angela, I, I'm glad you brought that up because really, um, this is more of a mental thing than it is yes. anything else. It is, it is so mental. Um, their mentality determines how this whole thing works. And you have, to, you have to believe it before you can see it. And I think that is so much the crux of this. The people who are financially independent and doing their own things, even people that are you know, designing uh, fancy aircrafts and cars, they're thinking of the concept before it becomes a reality. And you have to be that way as well. And the negative is that it's true too. If you don't think it'll work, it most likely won't manifest itself physically either. So you think about those things, your thoughts uh, determine a lot of the actions and attitudes that happen in the world. So uh, think positive and be around positive people. I yes. I taught my daughter this. My daughter is uh, 18 years old now. She's looking at colleges and stuff. And she's got some friends that are, I remember when she was in, in the early parts of high school, she was kind of like, eh, I don't know. These friends are kind of weird. I told her, I said, hey, if they're affecting your mindset, you may want to get rid of them. Yeah. If you can't change your friends, change your friends. <laughs> I told her that. If you can't change your friends, change your friends. You got you to gotta do some different things because your goals are bigger and better than others. You may want to, she wants to attend some certain colleges and do these certain classes. I said, this is great. This is high level stuff. Your mediocre friends I mean, I want to have that same mindset. They want to do some different things. So again, if you can't change your friends, change your friends. So that's in your good. same circles too. You, they say you are the sum result of the five people that you hang out with the most. You are the sum, the sum result of the five people that you hang out around with most. And so you look at it and say, who do I hang out with the most here? By, by choice. I choose to hang out with this person, this person, this person. Am I... Am I the sum result of what those five people are? If they see you, they probably see a sum of those other five people. Uh, hopefully that's a good thing. Yeah, that is so good. So good. I love that. I'm going to so use that phrase and I'm going to give you credit too. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> um, yeah, when my son went off to college, he found out that the people he went through high school with uh, when he came back were 
the same people and that he had grown and changed. In five years of college, he was no longer the same kid from that high school. And he was like, mom, this is so lonely. And I'm like, oh no, better friends are coming. Don't let that lonely last very long. So he's learned. And today he's in the United Kingdom traveling with a friend of his. And those other high school friends are still shooting hoops over at the basketball go every afternoon. So <laughs> there you go. Um, Stephanie says, I could change my friends. So I changed my friend. She likes that too. This was so good. Thank yeah. you for showing up today, Terry. I appreciate you. Um, tell them where they can find more about you. Where can they work with you, hear, hear from you? Tell them, tell them your stuff. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Will do, will do. So right now, I'm, uh, Facebook is the best way. Become my friend on Facebook, Terry Gibson, and you'll see just kind of me there. Um, but I've also got a group going. It's the Network Marketing Fundamentals group. It's a Facebook group that we started for this call. Uh, we'll be doing another call series in January, and that one may be focused strictly on products. And I found this out with ladies. You can tell me if this is true or not. But ladies like to buy stuff from a myriad of sources. They, uh, to try to quarantine people to only buy from one spot sounds, sounds silly. Even if it's a one singular, singular network marketing company, they like to buy Tupperware. They like to buy nail stuff. They like to buy jewelry. It's like, oh, you know what? Why not have a forum where everyone can share? And you never know. I had a guy that was, or a young lady, that was interested in essential oils. So I turned her over to a young living girl. And she said, but I don't do oils. I do uh, a wine. She was in Florida. She does a network marketing company that, that sells wine. Well, my oil girl bought from the wine girl. And they met each other's auto ship requirements for the month. I thought, well, that's that works out great. <laughs> Absolutely. You never know who's doing business. So that's what we're going to start up in, in the month of January. So this is just fun, some fun things. I've been 17 years in the industry of network marketing. So I've, I've been around, I've, I've been there and done that, got the t-shirt. So I know what's good and work, works with businesses and what people can grow from. So Facebook right now, and uh, we can reach out. I'd love to be friends with you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I appreciate all of you that came and hang, hang out with us today. Um, I plan on bringing more people like this into the Freedom Foundation group, just because I think people need to hear from different sides of the fence, so to speak. And I don't think every trainer has to come from within our company. Um, and like I told somebody yesterday, Walmart has people walk in and out of their door every single day, but not all of them buy. So we all shop at different places. So what Terry just said is phenomenal. And um, I'll get with you to get the link to that group so I can drop that with this video as well. So y'all have an Love amazing it. We afternoon. Can do that for sure, for sure. Absolutely. Y'all have an amazing afternoon and I will see you hopefully next, no, next week is Christmas. So Merry Christmas. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.